the Million Dollar Highway in Colorado, a 25 mile stretch in southwest Colorado, encompassing stunning 11,000 foot alpine mountain views, dangerous curving roads with sheer cliffs dropping hundreds of feet down to the gorge below, pristine alpine lakes and immense waterfalls. If you want an adrenaline filled drive with some of the best views in the United States, you definitely have to check out the Million Dollar Highway. Join us on our Colorado Million Dollar Journey from Murray to Silverton with stops in Telluride and two other noteworthy mountain passes on the way to Durango. The 25 mile stretch of the Million Dollar Highway between Ure and Silverton makes up a portion of the longer 232 mile loop called the San Juan Skyway National Scenic Byway, which runs on Highway 550, 62, 145, and 160, and passes through towns such as Ure, Silverton, Durango, Cortez, and Telluride. Once we have completed driving the Million Dollar Highway, we're going to continue south on 550 to Mola's Pass, Colbank Pass, and also stop in Telluride. We start our million dollar highway journey in the small town of Uray, Colorado with a population of around 950 people. Situated in the heart of the San Juan Mountains in southwest Colorado, Uray is known as the Switzerland of America at an elevation of 7,792 feet. Its rich history dates back to 1876 when the city was incorporated on October 2nd, two months after Colorado became a state. Southwest Colorado San Juan Mountains are home to some of the richest gold and silver finds. Back in the 1870s, gold was found here and dozens of small mining towns grew into flourishing communities. Places like Ure, Silverton, Telluride, Lake City, and a lot more that are lost in history sprang up sometimes overnight. Thousands of men came from all over the world looking for the fortune. Today you can drive down old mountain trails and see ghost towns along with their old mining buildings. Most of the old mines are sealed for the public's protection. Some remote mines can be entered, but years of neglect has left them hazardous. Heading south from Uray for about three miles, you'll reach Bear Creek Falls, a popular waterfall which flows directly under the highway. There is a small parking lot where you can park and view the waterfall. Bear Creek Falls is one of the most prominent waterfalls found in the Uray area, plunging over 200 feet in a share drop down to the Uncompa Gray Gorge. This stretch through the Uncompah Gray Gorge is challenging and potentially hazardous to drive. The ascent to Red Mountain Pass is marked with a number of hairpin curves used to gain elevation and again narrow lanes for traffic, many carved directly into the rocky sides of the mountains. As you continue, you will drive through a small town called Ironton about 7 miles south of Uray. The popular city hovered around a thousand residents in the town's heyday of the late 19th century. Ironton had its own mines, two daily trains from Silverton, as well as hotels, saloons, and other necessities of a larger mining camp. Today, the abandoned ghost town receives visits from curious travelers and history buffs passing through southwest Colorado. We drove the Million Dollar Highway in mid-September. We were lucky enough to see the start of the changing fall colors. Trees in the lower elevations under 8,000 feet weren't changing yet. But as soon as we climbed higher to over 10,000 feet, the Colorado fall colors sure showed off. Continuing south towards Silverton, you'll soon gain elevation arriving at Red Mountain Pass, which is a stunning 11,018 foot summit of the Million Dollar Highway. Although the road may be both treacherous and intimidating, adventurous drivers are rewarded with breathtaking views from the top. 
Red Mountain Pass lies within the area of the San Juan Mountains commonly known as the American Alps. This means that there are both incredible mountain views as well as dangerous driving conditions. Anyone who is planning to travel from Uray to Silverton along the Million Dollar Highway must be a confident driver paying very close attention to the road. Take your time and go slow. These roads are tricky and it's a long way down steep slopes. There are a number of turns around mountains that you'll need to take 10 miles an hour. The area driven to and from Red Mountain Pass contains 8% grades, huge cliffs, and sharp turns. The journey up and down Red Mountain Pass is also known for flash floods, loose rock, and lots of snowfall. US 550s generally open year-round. With that being said, the road will close during times of heavy snowfall. It is advised to always check the weather and be prepared for anything when traversing Red Mountain Pass. The Million Dollar Highway, which is also called US 550, is well-maintained, paved asphalt road. Therefore, most of the passenger vehicles can traverse the pass. During the winter months, four-wheel drive vehicles are strongly recommended and motorists should travel with chains or snow tires. During dry conditions in spring, summer, and fall, the drive up Red Mountain Pass provides an unforgettable experience. There are many places to stop to enjoy the scenery and take pictures both north and south of the pass. Continuing south on the Million Dollar Highway, you will arrive in a small town called Silverton, which is home to around 750 people. Silverton is one of the highest towns in the United States at 9,318 feet above sea level. Silverton sits in a flat area of the Animus River Valley and are surrounded by steep peaks. Most of the peaks surrounding Silverton are 13ers, the highest being Storm Peak at 13,487 feet. The entire town is included as a federally designated natural historic landmark district called the Silverton Historic District. Although the Million Dollar Highway technically ends in Silverton, you can continue driving south from Silverton on the San Juan Skyway towards Durango through a couple more beautiful mountain passes which contain the same stunning mountain views and changing fall leaves as the Million Dollar Highway. After driving through Silverton, you'll gradually gain elevation up the next mountain and arrive at Mullis Pass, with an elevation of 10,970 feet. This is a great location to stop and stretch your legs. There are many other areas around Mullis Pass to enjoy hiking, off-road vehicles, and snowshoeing in the winter months. The pass itself makes for a great picnic lunch. There are a few areas with picnic tables that overlook the lake and their surrounding mountains. Make sure you check the weather forecast before you go. Beware that the roads can sometimes close down at the last minute due to treacherous weather or rock slides, so make sure that you plan your trip accordingly. Be on the lookout for snow plows and other equipment during snowy weather.
While you can drive the 25 mile stretch of the million dollar highway in only about 45 minutes, most road trippers allow for about two hours to view the sights and make stops along the way. If you want to continue all the way to Durango on the San Juan Skyway, plan on a generous 3.5 hours since there are so many awesome areas to stop to enjoy the views. Continuing south from Mullis Pass on the San Juan Skyway for 7 miles, the final mountain pass before heading down an elevation to Durango is called Coal Bank Pass with an elevation of 10,640 feet. The Engineer Mountain Trailhead lies just south of Coal Bank Pass along US 550. There is a large parking area on the west side of the highway for hikers and mountain bikers to access the trail. Another notable location on the San Juan Skyway is the drive into Telluride, Colorado, sitting at an elevation of 8,754 feet. Originally called Columbia, the Rowdy Mining Camp became a town in 1878. In 1887, the town was renamed in order to distinguish itself from Columbia, California, another booming mining town. The name Telluride was chosen as the element tellurium was used as an indicator of gold and silver. By the early 1900s, over $250 million in gold was mined from the surrounding mountains and Telluride's population was close to 5,000 people. As you drive through Telluride's historic Main Street, follow the Highway 145 East until you reach the end of the pavement. Once arriving at the end, you'll be able to see in distance the long, free-falling waterfall called Bridal Veil vale Falls. To get even closer to the waterfall, there is a two-mile round-trip hike gaining elevation bringing you to the base of the waterfall. Perched on the brink of the sheer cliff overlooking the falls, the 115-year-old Bridal Veil vale Powerhouse, a hydroelectric power plant, is often touted as one of the oldest operating industrial AC power plants in the world. If you only have time for one hike in Telluride, this is the hike you want to go on. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe to see more weekly travel guides.